you've said you grew up on Dolly Parton music. You know, you did Dolly in Dumplin'. You helped interview her for a magazine profile. Have you actually ever met her yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, I think you share publicity team with her. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually, yes. Uh, Dolly and I have met several times. Okay. And the thing about Dolly that I always tell people, they're like, what is she, what's she really like? She's exactly like what you think she is. Yeah. She's that nice. She's that perfect. When we were filming Dumplin', she came to set um, one day. Well, no, it, it was like one week. And so she was there for two days, but I was only on the set the one day. And I roll in at four o'clock in the morning, just looking like boo damn it, you know, <laughs> just terrible. Sipping on my coffee, just <laughs> little bits and pieces of drag left over from the day before. And I get in there and she's done. She's like, all the sequins, all the fringe, all the hair, all the makeup, everything at four o'clock in the morning. And she was like, well, if I can do it, so can you. I said, honey, if I had your team, I wouldn't look half this bad. I said, now point me in the direction of the trailer. I'll see you in two hours. <laughs> but every time I see her, she she remembers me. She knows my name. She, I was doing this event um, at the, the Grammy Museum because they had done taken all of our costumes and stuff and did this whole big uh, exhibit a couple of years back. And I'm across the room, you know, I'm like, I'm never even going to see Dolly tonight. She's busy. All that. She screams across the room, Ginger, Ginger, come on over here. Let's get a picture. So I'm like, it's one of those surreal moments where, yes, you've met her and you know her, but you'd never expect somebody who's such an idol of yours to A, remember you and B, call you over by name <laughs> so it, it, it was it was very surreal but it was lovely and every time i've met her she is just the nicest most supportive person you could ever imagine she seems like a true delight <laughs> she is and her niece who does a lot of she she like sources a lot of jewelry and accessories and stuff for her um she was obsessed with my earrings because i had had butterfly uh earrings and ring and everything made uh for for the Grammy event. Yeah, that's what it was okay. for. And so she came over and talked to me for forever. And she's <laughs> just as lovely as her aunt. That's what you like to hear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now that you are, you know, in this country space yourself, what has been, you know, the most rewarding aspect of it? You know, releasing the album filled with songs that have been inspired by your life. Just just how has that been for you? It's been amazing. Uh, I, I always wanted to do country music because it's what I was raised on. Yeah. But I always felt like, the country world had this immediate aversion to the drag world and vice versa. You know, yeah. if you love country, you're probably not going to like drag. And if you love drag, you're probably not going to like country. So mm -hmm. I had to figure out the way to kind of ease both sides of that, of, of, of myself. I had to ease both parts in, you know? Yeah. And I was very concerned because it's, it's difficult to break into anything new, particularly yeah. something that's not really set up for your success. Yeah. So I've been overwhelmed at the fact that um, the drag race fans, of course, you know, they, they love me. So they're going to support me and what I do and the choices that I make. But I've been overwhelmed with how much traction it's gained in the actual country space. I mean, it, it's being <laughs> shared left and right. I've been doing all these interviews. I, I talked with, with um, CMT and like it, it's just being featured a lot. And I actually, I asked one time during an interview, I was like, why do you like this? Like, what is about it? And I, I was like, I'm grateful that you do, but please tell me what I did right so I can continue to do that. And they said, because the message is universal. Everybody has felt like this at some point in their life, uh, particularly about Walk Tall. And they're like, this is kind of an anthem for the average everyday person. You know, no matter what the world piles on you, you just make yourself feel fabulous and then walk as tall as you can. I was like, okay, well, good. That was the easy one to write. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, the album's full of like storytelling type songs too, which is so perfect for that country world that I'm glad to see that this just country in general is expanding to include yeah. more people that really haven't been featured as much in the past. It's been so great. Like I never expected it to be as good as it is. And I, I like every single day I wake up and I'm like, who am I talking to today? And they tell me, I'm like, really? <laughs> they care? Okay. 
<laughs> no, it's nice. And it's nice for the, the gay country fans out there too, that we're getting a little more representation as well. So exactly. <laughs> and, you know, I think you kind of maybe tease or alluded to this already, but I was going to say, if you could land any dream duets in the future, who would they be? <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to stay tuned to see what we're yeah. working on with that. <laughs> um, but there's, there's some big ones. There are absolutely some big ones out there that are very excited. Um, and I'm excited to do them. I don't want to screw it up, you know? So know. I'm not, I'm not, but if I could do with any, I'm going to tell you the one who's not going to do it is Dolly Parton because she's just too busy. But she would be my dream. Okay. Could you imagine doing like a cover of I'm a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll with Dolly Parton and Tina Turner? Oh. And me yeah, right in the middle, agree. just like. Just it would be the best thing ever <laughs> but that will never happen but that is the dream <laughs> well we'll put it out there we'll manifest it for you <laughs> and lastly i just wanted to ask you about your halloween plans this year just i know you have the disney villains ball coming up in the in the uk with you yeah. and ursula which is sounds amazing but i guess what do you have lined up <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm going to do the Disney Villains Tour, which I'm really excited about. You know, a couple years ago, there was that petition that gained a lot of traction online for me to play Ursula in the movie. Yep. And I, I didn't get that. I made it further than most people think. In the, the I was going to ask, did anything serious actually come from that? Because even I think yeah. Dotmik said she had conversations with about Hellraiser, like when yeah. after that finale look, just mm -hmm. people are watching. People are watching and, and drag is... It's popular right now. You know, it's at the height of its popularity. People's, I think it's great because people are starting to realize that we're true artists and all of us are different. We have different things to offer, but we can sing, we can dance, we can act, we can do make, we could do all of these things. And, you know, it, we're kind of ready to go when we show up and people are liking that, you know? <laughs> um, so I'm doing that tour. So anyway, oh, the whole reason I brought up that thing. I was so sad when I didn't get cast. I didn't expect to get cast, but I was sad when I didn't because I was like, oh, well, there goes my chance. <laughs> I have had more offers to play Ursula all around the world than I probably ever would have if that wasn't a thing. So I'm really excited to do this. I have a brand new costumes and stuff being made. Um, after that, I'm doing a Christmas tour with my best friend, Gidget Galore, um, which tons of costumes quick changes sets it's a non-denominational holiday romp nice. so that's really fun um everything that that i'm doing and i'm doing a lot is at gingermingelive.com that's gingermingelive.com um and i also just sold a book so that'll be coming out soon all right well keep an eye out for that too then yeah, no, it's and it's good. good. It's called um, it goes with the whole country thing, and it's called Southern Fried Sass, and it is my life story told through anecdotes, advice, and recipes. Mm. So it, it's a cookbook as well as a memoir. Well, I am happy to hear that you are booked and very, very busy this year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> congratulations on everything, and um, yeah, just a pleasure to speak with you. You too, sweetheart. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to talk to me. You as well, and getting all glammed up to do it. <laughs> One of the arches rolled out of bed. <laughs> sure. <laughs> the sad part is it, most of this is left over from last night. Well, it still looks great. <laughs> Thank you. It's had time to settle. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and have a good one. Thanks, honey. You too.